Um, hypoxic patients after stroke portends a bad uh, recovery period. Um, improved long-term survival is seen with CPAP. Compliant patients uh, who are post-stroke, however, the compliance in general with um, patients who have had strokes are, is, is, is not as good as people who have not had strokes. Um, and it's, it's unclear if the, um, the treatment actually reduces the risk of another stroke. Moving on to arrhythmias, nocturnal arrhythmias are noted in patients, uh, in, in, in about 50% of sleep disordered breathing patients. It increases, the, the incidence of arrhythmias increases with increased apnea hypopnea indexes and hypoxemia. Most common arrhythmias are, that are seen, atrial fibrillation, non-sustained non VT, sinus arrest, secondary AV block, and uh, PVCs. In general, there's a 17-fold increase in the odds ratio of an arrhythmia, um, specifically AFib and non-sustained VT, after an episode of sleep disorder breathing. So after you have your apnea or hypopnea, you're at a 17-fold risk of having an arrhythmia. In general, AFib, uh, AFib has been more associated with central sleep apneas and complex uh, ventricular activity with uh, obstructive sleep apneas. Um, the prevalence, th this was actually quite interesting to me, but the prevalence of undiagnosed sleep apnea in patients with pacemakers is just about 60%, and um, sleep disorder breathing uh, is present in about 68% in, in AV block. And interestingly, I just saw a patient who came to me with a pacemaker. He has sleep apnea. It was actually mild. I treated him um, with CPAP, and just yesterday he came to the office and, it, and I showed him at 4.27 in the morning his um, ventricular ectopy and complex uh, 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 EKG tracing showing, I think, a Mobitz 1 completely went away, and he was in normal sinus rhythm, rhythm from about 4.30 in the morning on, on CPAP. Um, Post-op AFib, uh, we see more likely in sleep apnea patients. 50% of atrial fibrillation patients at cardioversion are likely to have sleep apnea. Mechanism behind arrhythmia and sleep apnea, there's cardiac basal activation, pressor surges, sympathetic activation to the periphery, inflammation as we already talked about, transmural pressures as we already talked about, and hypoxemia. The risk of arrhythmia uh, decreases with uh, CPAP therapy. There's a low, lower recurrence rate of atrial fibrillation after, after elective cardioversion in sleep apnea patients treated with CPAP. After one year, they, sh they showed uh, 82 down to uh, 42 percent, and 58 percent decrease in PVCs with CPAP in patients with sleep apnea and systolic dysfunction. Um, initial reports in 2002 showed that a there was a 50 percent reduction in sleep disordered breathing when they did atrial overdrive pacing for sleep apnea. However, in studies in 2005, 2006, and 2007, don't really, um, they're not really re reproducible. So they don't, they don't see an effect on, on treating sleep apnea uh, with, with either getting rid of your sleep disorder breathing or improving nocturnal oxygen saturations with atrial overdrive pacing. Um, last topic I'm probably going to talk about is uh, cardiovascular disease and sleep disordered breathing. There's a two-fold increase uh, in general um, seen, and the risk of coronary artery disease is primarily in men greater or less than 70 years of age. Sleep apnea patients have, um, in general, subclinical coronary artery disease. This study just came out, I believe, last year showing uh, an inc increased coronary artery calcification. Um, also a study that just came out recently, I think it was, yeah, it was last year, uh, showed that sleep apnea patients, no cardio, and, and they didn't have any cardiovascular disease, they actually showed microcirculation, oxidant production, and end endothelial dysfunction. And they think that this may be a precursor to developing cardiovascular disease. Um, there was also a study looking at untreated severe sleep apnea at a 10-year mark in men, and it increased uh, fatal and non-fatal events. ST depressions occur in about a third of patients with severe sleep apnea at nighttime. Nocturnal angina and ST depressions are diminished with CPAP therapy. Patients with sleep disordered breathing and coronary artery disease at a five-year follow-up composite endpoint of death, MI, and CVA. 28% of men um, had that composite endpoint versus 16% who did not have sleep disorder breathing. And for women, 20% of women uh, had that composite endpoint versus 14% who did not have sleep disordered breathing. <laughs> there was another uh, study that came out in 2005. I thought this was actually quite interesting that there's uh, an increased risk for sudden cardiac death. If you do not have sleep apnea, you're more likely to have your heart attack between 6 a.m and 11 a.m., but if you have sleep apnea, you're more likely to have your heart attack with sudden death between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., so you die in your sleep. Um, there's a decreased recurrence, uh, occurrence of um, 
cardiovascular death, uh, acute coronary syndrome, heart failure, and re the need for revascularization if you treat sleep apnea. And um, uh, men with severe sleep apnea, there's a marked increase in fatal and non-fatal events, which is much less when you treat with CPAP. Um, just a couple of words on coronary artery disease, sleep apnea after uh, percutaneous um, uh, intervention. Sleep apnea is associated with restenosis and remodeling. There's an increased incidence in revascularizations and cardiac mor mortality if you have sleep disordered breathing. There's less of an increase in your left ventricular ejection fraction and less of an improvement in your wall motion if you have sleep disordered breathing after PCI. Treatment of sleep apnea after PCI um, shows a, a reduction in cardiac deaths. So mechanism of action in terms of cardiovascular disease, uh, increased blood pressure, endothelial dysfunction, vascular rem remodeling, sympathetic vasoconstriction. There's, there's definitely a common theme here. <laughs> um, sy systemic inflammation, uh, your intrathoracic pressure changes, and your hypoxemia and acidosis. Um, CPAP improves early atherosclerosis and microvascular disease as well as endothelial dysfunction. However, as I mentioned earlier, there aren't any large randomized controlled studies. There are actually three proposed right now. This study is about 400 patients uh, going on in Europe right now. This study is going to be going on in the United States and it's about 400 patients. This study is an international study, New Zealand, Australia, China, and I'm forgetting the other one. Um, and that will be done uh, soon, but that's going to be, I think, about 4,000 patients. Um, in, in lieu of time, I'm going to actually just uh, skip over the last two or three slides here, but um, uh, I do have a uh, USB drive back there that has the talk on it with all the references if you're interested in looking at this a little bit further. But with pulmonary arterial hypertension, we do see an increased incidence of this, and with CPAP therapy, it does decrease <coughs> PA pressures. Um, also with end-stage renal disease, there's an increase in sleep disorder breathing with end-stage renal disease, we see in about 40 to 60 percent of patients, and it's often a mixed picture in terms of central and uh, obstructive sleep apneas. And in terms of treatment um, for obstructive sleep apnea, there's usually a variety of treatments of waste, weight loss, trying to uh, 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 work on positional sleep um, to avoid sleep disorder breathing, oral appliances, surgery, and positive airway pressure, as I've already mentioned. For central sleep apnea, there's, there's optimization of heart failure, there's cardiac resynchronization, re there's BiPAP therapy, supplemental O2, and there's some talk about acetylzolamide. Um, but I, I would, I would uh, keep your eyes open to this, this area of treatment for central sleep apnea patients, specifically the, the adaptive pressure support servoventilation, which may actually prove to be very good for uh, central sleep apnea patients. So in summary, there's actually a persuasive body of data supporting it, a causal relationship between sleep disorder breathing and cardiovascular disease. And in the future, I think we're going to see a lot more um, in terms of uh, randomized controlled trials, which are underway right now to investigate further whether sleep disorder breathing accelerates heart disease progression, uh, whether the treatment resu results in fewer cardiovascular events, and whether uh, the treatment reduces mortality. And that's it. Thank you. So we'll